the coordinator at King's College along with Fred and Get last year for the Locative Media Summer School. Um, bef I'll have a little talk and then I'll hand to Gert, who will then hand to Fred. So I'd just like to open by acknowledging the um, the sovereign owners of the land from which I'm talking to you from. So I live on the land of the Ngunnawal people, which is in Canberra, the Australian Capital Territory, Australia, and would like to acknowledge um, elders past, present and emerging and would also like to acknowledge any First Nation peoples that are in the audience with us today. So thank you for joining us. I'm really looking forward to this presentation. Um, great to have you with us, Mike, and now I'll hand over to Gert. Mm -hmm. Hello to all. I uh, propose we introduce ourselves very briefly before we go to, to Mike. Um, um, and this I'm Geert. Uh, I will be the ones that will take care of you during the course that is coming up together with Tracy and, uh, and Fred. Uh, my background is in poetry. I was already very early in my career interested in how poetry and, and location spaces uh, were interacting with each other. And I had the luck to meet in Spain a fantastic collective uh, of which I became part for uh, many years, um, which was called Escoitar, uh, who were the pioneers in locative media by uh, bringing a platform called Notus, which was based on collaborative practices and creations of um, uh, sound walks um, through GPS uh, in the very early times. So since then, almost, well, almost 20 years now, um, I'm um, fascinated by the potential of this, of this medium and how it connects ourselves uh, with the earth and others. Um, the no tools the, the lasted for uh, about uh, six, seven years before various members of it um, joined together with Fred uh, to create CGMAP, about which Fred will take, tell you in a minute. So let's take this for now. We have plenty of time the coming three weeks to talk and to um, get each other uh, even um, better. Uh, so I'll leave it now to Fred to introduce uh, himself and Yes, it's a pleasure to, to be with you in this course. You know, I am a passionate of locative media, locative storytelling. Since a long time, we created the CGMA platform, which is uh, to bring the concept of co collaborative locative media around the creation of map and the creation of communities. And uh, yeah, so I will uh, be with you uh, along the course uh, to, to guide you and help you and share everything I know uh, and, and learn from you a lot, of course. So yeah, it's an exciting moment. I will not speak too much right now because uh, after the pres my presentation, I will uh, share a short presentation to show you the results of uh, the last course and what we did uh, regarding collaborative mapping. So I will uh, deactivate my camera right now and let Mike uh, talk. Thank you. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Gert. Thanks, Tracy. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mike uh, Duggan. I'm a, a, a cultural geographer is my kind of training, uh, but I work in a digital humanities department at uh, King's College London. And what I want to talk about today is a located media summer school um, project, which Gert, uh, Fred and Christina, who's in the audience, uh, designed last year um, to give you a sense of um, you know, what we did last year and also how uh, Tracy, Fred and Gert have built on that, that this year into something you know, even, even better. So basically just to give you some context about I think what's, what's coming your way in the next few weeks. So this project was part of a, a larger uh, research project around how located media could be used as, a, as an educational tool. So what, what is it about the qualities of located media that can um, be used to, to teach students, but also to foster these, these meaningful relationships to uh, the earth and to each other. Uh, and part of that project was to develop a summer school around, around um, those, those key themes. So the, the team itself, as I said, was, was me, Fred, Gert and, and Christina. Um, and we had to work quite quickly to transform this into an online summer school last summer rather than a um, a uh, kind of face-to-face -face summer school as we originally planned. So we had about um, 
We, we, the funding bid had gone in in September 2019. We got the funding for the kind of beginning of the, the pandemic in 2020. And quite quickly, we had to kind of work with the, the context to tr transform um, uh, this into an online experience. And actually, in hindsight, we, we pulled off... Um, uh, you, we pulled it off in a way which I hadn't anticipated we, we could, and I'm really, really pleased with where it turned out, uh, more of which I'll talk about uh, later on. So the, the research objective of the larger project was to investigate how locator media might be used in an educational setting to foster meaningful engagements with locally global issues of climate change and, and forced migration. So we're interested in the ways that um, global issues happen at a local scale or the local um, experiences of our everyday lives informs our perceptions and understandings of these larger global um, uh, forces. And we were interested in how does locating media kind of help bridge that gap between the local and the global. Uh, at the time of the, the funding application, we were focused on, on climate change and, and forced migration. But as, as I'll show you in, in a second, we, 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 we couldn't neglect or couldn't um, uh, ignore the, the pandemic at the time of, it was when, the, when we were designing the summer school. So that was brought into it um, later on. And the, the summer school objective was along similar lines. So to investigate the possibilities of using a key feature of locator media, the ability to locate and tell stories about one's locale, to study how effective this technology is in helping people make sense of locally situated experiences in relation to global forces of change. So again, in, in short, thinking about how uh, one of the, the properties of locating media is to put your own stories on the map or to you know, put a collection of different stories on the map about, the sim about similar themes. And you know, Fred and Gert's work on, on CGO map, you know, was already doing this long before I came along, but it seemed like a, a very um, good platform to kind of bring all this stuff together and, and kind of make it work around the summer school type uh, activity. So we had four key themes for the summer school itself. Um, and we had the, the same number of, of participants as, as Tracy has planned for, for this summer school. So the four themes were uh, immobility, place, climate change and, and COVID-19. And as I said, COVID-19 wasn't the, the kind of key theme when we put in the application, but it became something which was really important to these larger issues. You know, if we think about climate change, if we think about ecological uh, devastation, COVID-19 is a kind of big part in that, you know, arguably resulted from those things. So we thought we'd have to include it um, in our discussions. And actually, in the end, it became uh, a key theme throughout many of the presentations that we gave, as well as something which actually shaped the ways in which the, the summer school worked uh, and the kind of conversations we had at the time. So what we did, I think, um, I was thinking about this this, this week, and I, I think we can break it into three uh, things. So firstly, we created learning spaces. Uh, we also created social spaces and we created spaces for, for collaboration. So we had a, a timetable of, of guest lectures uh, and seminars and workshops uh, where we invited um, people to come and talk about their work in, in both a formal setting, so in a kind of lecture uh, seminar environment, but also in an informal setting as well through the, the kind of so the social um, events in the evenings. And this, this mix of uh, kind of formal, informal learning environments, I think created a kind of nice atmosphere, you know, one in which we could really engage and, and get to, to grips with the, the topics in question, but also in a way in which we could get to know one another. And this getting to know one another through the, the two weeks was a really key um, outcome, really key aspect of, of the projects, well, for me especially. As well as uh, creating this, this timetable, and the timetable probably looks very similar to the one that um, uh, Tracy Gert and Fred have set up. So we had lectures, I think, every, every couple of days, apart from at the weekend, and the seminars were following directly upon on the lectures. And the idea would be that we discuss some of the key themes in, in the lecture in those seminars. The workshops were more tutorial based. So when Fred needed to give instructions about how the, the CGO map worked, for example, um, we'd have a, have a session, more technical based session. We also had a collection of, of readings and, and resources which participants could, could use, but also contribute to. Um, in hindsight, we could have made a bit more of this and it might be interesting for, for those in, in this, this school to um, uh, think about ways of, 
of exchanging uh, information with each other in, in, in ways that, that works. The other thing we did was create social spaces. So um, the, I think this was Gert's idea in, in the beginning. We came up with the idea of, of having a, an hour every day where we'd meet that was more, much more informal. And, and we called this the, the Earthlings Cafe. And it was, you know, looked the same as, as the lectures in the sense that it was a, just another Zoom meeting, but the conversations were really given the opportunity to kind of go where they wanted to. And this is where we learnt much about what the participants were doing in their own practice and their own work, as much as our, our guests and us were, were telling, telling participants about our work. And I think for me, these are the, probably the most important part of the, the summer school itself, because they brought the group together in a, in a kind of cohesive way. And, you know, as the, the summer school developed, as the, each day went past, I think that group of people, group of kind of regulars at these Earthings cafes really became a, a kind of unified group. And I, you know, having good, good chats with all of them by the end of the two weeks. Um, so in terms of what they look like, you know, as I'm sure you're very familiar, they look like Zoom meetings. There's not much more I can say about that. Um, I think they would look very different uh, if we had these things in person. This is a list of some of our, of our guest lectures. I think some of them, I think Misha's here today. Um, and what we try to do here, and this is where, where Gert and Fred's experience really really paid, paid dividends, was bring a collection of people working in locative media from a number of different aspects, um, you know, to give a broad spectrum of ideas and, and inspiration to the participants about what they could do with locative media based upon what was already been done. Uh, so as I said, some some people came and gave kind of formal hour lectures and other people just dropped in for, for kind of half an hour, an hour or so to talk about their work. But really, really grateful for for their contributions. I think, you know, without them, the, the summer school wouldn't have been, the, 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 you know, didn't, wouldn't have turned out the way that it, it did. Uh, yeah, as I said, the learning resources were, were a kind of collection of materials. Um, I kind of covered that. The social spaces looked again very similar to zoom meetings and then the third thing was the, the spaces for collaboration so we you know the, at the core of the, the the summer school was we're asking participants to produce a um a located media project which they could place on on the cgo map so we gave them a very uh br kind of ambiguous brief which was to create a located media project using the course materials and CG map that addresses the interactions or intersections between immobility, place, climate change, and COVID-19. And that, that was you know, purely intentional to, to give this ambiguous brief. We didn't want to interfere too much into you know, what, what these projects were about or in, in, too much into the, the creative process behind those projects. And I'm really, really glad we didn't um, kind of instruct groups where to go because the projects that we got in the end you know were very very different in, in their scope and in their, their kind of uh, themes um, and I think that was again was one of the great outcomes of this 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 summer school was that we what we got from the participants was something which we couldn't have possibly uh, anticipated before in order to kind of get that that, that space of collaboration going um, I think this was Fred's idea we, we, we came up with a game to almost gamify the creative process or to, to, to kind of kickstart the creative process. So we used a, a Trello board, which I think Fred is a big fan of, and I am now, uh, where we broke the key themes down into a number of different topics or, or categories. And then the idea would be that part, uh, each group would, would work with these boards to, to pick and choose um, categories, part of these larger themes and kind of bring them together um, in, in, in unique ways. So again, we, we just provided the materials and then it was up to the group to kind of come up with where they wanted to take their projects um, and, and in which direction. And, you know, on the, the first couple of days where we did this, this game work, uh, you know, some groups had very clear ideas at the end of those two days about what their project was going to be about. Other groups' projects kind of moved and morphed as they went through the, the summer school. But it was definitely a good way to kind of get things going, get those 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 creative juices going, I guess. And the result itself, I think Fred's going to talk about this a bit more um, uh, after me, was a was what we call the Earthlings map, which is based upon the the CGO map software. Uh, and if you, I'll put these links. I think I put the the slides to be able to download these two links. The first one is to the the final group presentations from that summer school. And this is where each group presented their project and also showed us and went through the, the map that they've created. 
And the second link is to the map itself where you can explore um, each of the individual uh, pins you know, in, in your own time. In terms of the, the themes from the, the group projects, uh, you know, we haven't got, haven't got time to go into each one individually, but covered a, a vast range of uh, different topics uh, based upon the, those themes of the, the summer school. So just go through a few of those now. So uh, we had a great project on, on masks, public space and surveillance. So, you know, when, when was it um, uh, okay to wear a mask? When was it okay not to wear a mask? How do different forms of surveillance work around masking? So, you know, um, surveillance from the state, but also surveillance from families and friends and the general public. Um, so that was, that was really, really uh, fascinating. We had quite a few projects which dealt with with memories and place and and time and space. So you know, when is uh, how how do you locate a memory or how do memories um, uh, relate to other memories in different places? And also, how does time play a role in that 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 um, kind of constitution too? We had projects about uh, slowing down and how the pandemic was a kind of opportunity to think a bit more about our local areas and what they you know, meant to us, but also how we engaged and interacted with our, our local areas. Um, so there was this, this idea of you know, thinking about the very local in relation to the, to the global uh, impacts of, of the pandemic. There were quite a few projects which dealt with, with community and, and community building. So how can we use located media to develop a community around a particular um, locally global issue? And this um, spilled out into things like interventions for, for urban planning. So we had one group that, that wanted to um, uh, map a series of, of, of bus stops together in, I think, in, in cities around the world to think differently about what the bus stop could be as a, as a local space. So, you know, it's not just a, a space of in, in, in kind of lot of transit, but it's a space of thinking about potential futures around uh, transport, but also um you know these kind of uh, in-between spaces in our everyday uh, lives and finally we had projects around um uh, you know walking especially walking in the city and how walking and located media kind of go hand in hand I'm, as i'm sure many of you are already aware and what is it about uh walking alone at the at the time um while also being together with other people so there's this kind of tension between we're living our own in, in individual bubbles, but at the same time contributing to this larger kind of walking collective around around these global themes. So yeah, I, I think Fred will talk a bit more about the projects, but I would encourage you to look at the map if you're interested in, in what we did last year. And one thing that's really um, struck me from the projects, which I hadn't anticipated, was this performative element of the, the, the group projects. So, you know, some of the projects were uh, more academically focused so you know um, they had a, had a problem they came up with a solution they presented that solution but other groups took a much more performative um, uh, kind of turn so they're the ways in which they presented their work was through, was through performance so you know I learned things about how we could use zoom for for performance in ways which I hadn't thought about before you know it's not just this utilitarian tool uh, with with faces on the screen there are actually many different you know ways in which we can we can uh, uh, you know, bring out performance through Zoom. And that's actually gone on to inform a, a more recent project, which I'm doing around, it's called Zoom Obscura, where we're looking at how to, you know, produce creative interventions through performances on, on Zoom, essentially. So, yeah, I was really, really happy and un unexpectedly pleased by the, the performative element of the project. Um, and one, one of those performances uh, we did as a group was this through this um, WhatsApp walk. And I think some of the text actually isn't appearing on the screen, but it's fine. So in, in the Earthings Cafe, one day we decided we wouldn't uh, talk to each other directly through, through the Zoom meeting. What we do is go out on a walk together in our local areas and we talk to each other or, or share things with each other on, in, you know, in a WhatsApp group. So we set up a WhatsApp group and we said, you know, go for a walk between... So at this time and that time and talk to each other through the things which you're seeing and doing and experiencing along that walk. And what it became was a, a kind of collage of, of different experiences, different times, different spaces, uh, all unfolding kind of simultaneously. Um, and if you look at this link, uh, you'll be taken to a film by, by Christina, who basically put together this, these, these images, these, this footage and these audio clips. And it really gives you a sense of 
you know, being together in a particular space and time, um, not necessarily using words to, you know, relate each other's experiences, but using um, other audio visual means. And uh, yeah, Christina and I are also writing a, a paper on this idea of, you know, building community through WhatsApp, building community through these walking exercises. And as I'm sure you know, many of you are now aware, this, this idea of the WhatsApp walk or, or, or walking through social media has become uh, something of a, a phenomena, I think, spurred on by the, the pandemic. OK, so I want to finish with with three reflections um, about how I how I saw or what, what, what I um, thought about the, the summer school kind of you know, 14 months on. And as I do this, I'm going to play a series of, of images uh, which are from that WhatsApp walk, but also interspersed with images from some of the lectures. And while some of the images might not make sense together, I kind of put them together quite randomly. They should give you, I should evoke um, some of those key themes of the projects and some of the interactions that we had uh, in, our, in our discussions. So I think this should play. Okay, so the first reflection is around uh, community. And, you know, I, I went into this project thinking, oh, it's, you know, it's a summer school. I hadn't, hadn't run a summer school before. It was a learning exercise. It was an academic exercise. But I came out of it thinking it was a community building exercise. And this was largely in part due to the participants that were involved and also to, to Fred and Gert, who, who really like pushed this idea that it wasn't about necessarily the, you know, the technology. It was about building these relationships, building this community around these particular themes. Um, and the, you know, the intensity of the summer school, so it was two weeks, it was almost every day. Uh, this really helps in building a sense of community amongst a particular group of people. Now, while that is not an option which is available to everyone, I think the people that, that did turn up regularly, I think, would have felt that cohesive uh, bond by the end of the, the two weeks. And, you know, in some cases, the, the groups that were built during those or came together during that summer school are still working together now in, in various different ways. Um, you know, those, those ideas that were, were produced together during that time have, have a, have, are having a kind of afterlife now. Uh, and in some ways, the, the, this summer school is a, is a kind of you know, the next step of, of that. Uh, you know, Locator Media and Locator Media Arts in particular, there's always been a community around that. And, you know, Fred and Gert will tell you all about that. Um, and, you know, looking back, I can see this summer school now as a kind of continuation of some of those, those, those themes. The second point of reflection was around connection and how... Um, the technologies that we were using, which we're all now familiar with, allow you to form connections, which um, I didn't think were, were possible before. So, the, the, you know, actual, actual connections where you actually invest in other people's, uh, what, they're, what they're saying and in their work, um, I always found much easier in a kind of face-to-face -face environment where I was working directly with them. But what I found through using you know, the technologies which we have now uh some of these, these these points of connection are actually much much more simpler than i thought so for example i've never me and fred have never met uh in person but i feel like i know him enough now you know to to call out the blue and kind of to begin a new project it's not it's not a barrier um to 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 working together and that that brings to the the kind of final reflection which is about co-learning um you know we started out the project thinking how do we look at summer schools in a way which is slightly different from the usual um, academic summer school where you, you, know, you, you bring in a bunch of guest speakers, you, you, they get to teach the, the class, and then the class produces some work. We try to almost upend that and say, OK, no, let's, let's have a more horizontal learning environment where we learn from each other rather than from the, you know, the dedicated educators. So, and I think we, we pulled this off by and large. Um, you know, all the participants had, I would say, much more experience in, in, in their, um, not, not all of them, but some of them had much more experience in using Locator Media than I did. And I certainly learned a lot from them about, you know, what was possible with Locator Media, what wasn't possible. Um, I think there was no, or there very little uh, resistance for participants to, to kind of challenge or to talk to the, the guest speakers. I think... We created an atmosphere where if you wanted to challenge something that was possible, 
um, we that that kind of idea of, of reflexivity, I, I think we try to build into to every day's uh, activities. And this really came across in um, uh, Christina's report of the summer school itself. So she she spoke to the participants during and after the the summer school, and they also kind of reflected on you know that it wasn't the usual learning space that that we're used to. And I'm really glad that we we pulled that off. And I think what's going to happen is it will just get greater in in, in this this um, summer school coming up. So I think that that's um, that's that's me. Uh, what I would say is that this the program for this summer school looks um even more adventurous than uh the one that we created i'm really really looking forward to to hearing more about the work which is being produced here and also seeing this as a continuation of the work that which we started last year so yeah thanks so much uh tracy gert and fred for kind of continuing um the story and i'm I really looking forward to hearing more about it Thanks so much, Mike. Um, I think Fred's going to do a short presentation now. I mean, I, I only hope we can live up to to what the summer school was like last year because, I mean, I was a participant mm. and it was really a fantastic experience, which was really what inspired me to to join forces with Gert and Fred to try and do something that, that focused on... Um, some of the, the things that sort of, I guess, uh, have been my focus and a focus of this part of the, the world as well. So um, how do we want to run this? Fred, did you want to do a demo or do we want to do Q&A first? Or? Yes, uh, Tracy, uh, I will take uh, five minutes uh, just to, to share the PDF uh, I prepared for the participants to download with uh, some more information about uh, collaborative mapping. So in this presentation, uh, you have a download uh, button at the bottom, and you can download it and you will find uh, several URLs. So uh, quickly, I would like to go through this PDF as a resource for you uh, before we start uh, the course. So as, as uh, Geert and uh, Mike commented already, we used the uh, locative, collaborative locative media platform called CGO Map explaining that uh, CGO map is not a product. Uh, we are not a company. Uh, this software has been created uh, like 10 years ago by uh, different artists and programmers with, with the aim, with the aim, yes, with the aim to, yeah, to, to teach, uh, and share and uh, do collaborative creation, uh, around the uh, mapping, uh, experiences, knowledge, memories, and it's really a big opportunity at the end uh, for every one of us uh, to at last uh, go back to the local uh, with uh, digital uh, technology. Uh, we have spent a lot of time in the global and we understand that it's very important to uh, to reconnect and uh, to connect with, uh, with the local places and the local people and local species. Uh, so, yeah, so that's what we did uh, CGO map 10 years ago. Then what we do, the process is uh, following uh, during uh, the course, the upcoming course. We will also, uh, we have also created a, a map uh, around the waters. And uh, we did, what we did last year was the Earthlings uh, map. Then you have here the link. Uh, uh, and the... Uh, on the Earthlings maps, you will find some different results for uh, participants, groups of, uh, of participants who work together. Uh, so it's very important to understand that uh, the process is always collaborative and uh, also that we don't have the aim to create an end product. What we are really interested in is a creative process and uh, what really matters is how we can build, uh, help to build resilient communities through technology and uh, collaborative mapping. Then what happens is that during uh, the two weeks course last year, uh, several uh, groups uh, created very interesting uh, projects. Uh, Mike already talked about it. Uh, so we have, for example, the project uh, around uh, exploring how we can 
uh, used in a more interesting way uh, the public space and the public infrastructure, like like bus stops, for example. So I invite you to spend time to to visit. Also, we have uh, this beautiful uh, proposal we, who was about uh, creating a forest, but a forest which is not only uh, done by true, true real trees, but also by imaginary trees. It was a project who grew after the, the summer school and is continuing to, to grow. We also have an interesting approach. Uh, it was about uh, planning after COVID-19 a collaborative work. So uh, a group of people uh, decided to organize a, an artistic work after the event. And also we have uh, a, a more like COVID-19 feeling approach about uh, sharing our deep feeling and sensation and, and thinking about the local global connections and how do we feel and how we can subvert the bad feeling uh, you know, of being locked down to to transcend this this experience altogether. And uh, what is very important is that there is really stories beyond the summer school. Uh, I mean that uh, different artists and and participants and academics uh, created their own, own project uh, beyond the, the course. So here I put it two examples. There are more examples, but I put it two who were uh, created uh, with a locative platform. One is a community of artists uh, in Margate. Uh, so it's called uh, A Different Lens. It's another map and a, co a community of artists explore new ways uh, to work together, uh, working and, and, and sharing with the community, local community, a new way to see the public space. Also, we have uh, this uh, beautiful project called Transhuman Center. Uh, it was uh, created in Brisbane a few months ago, and uh, it's uh, also a work in a botanic garden, uh, reviewing uh, a little bit what can be the flanner in 21st century, which is uh, beautiful. And uh, yeah, so at the end also, uh, Meeting Oceania is it's a result uh, also of, uh, of this uh, exchange and creative process. And we will start to use and you will start to explore and, and create content uh, with your team and with us uh, on the Meeting Oceania uh, map. You can already visit. Uh, we have some entries uh, related to speakers and uh, we uh, um, added some what we call audio grants you can discover, uh, which is also an interesting uh, new creative audiovisual format. And uh, we will explore also during during the course. Yes, yeah, so that's it uh, for me. That's the introduction. So please download the, the document and have a look before, before the course. Thank you. Okay. Should we open for questions? Yes. Did you want to say something? Uh, uh, no, Fred uh, summarized it uh, wonderfully. Um, one element, of course, we are in these spe very special times of the pandemic, uh, and the uh, previous course was um, happening on a moment that we still were sort of adapting to uh, the being in a pandemic. And um, uh, the, but um, by a, by creating a project that is both local, that allows local experiences, very local experiences, uh, without um, um, the demanding to go far out of your uh, living space, um, at the same time to be globally connected. Unfortunately, this is still valid and uh, even more now in, in, in your uh, country, uh, Tracy. Uh, mm. where, um, so uh, the CGO map software allows on, to work on two levels simultaneously uh, to create an, an, a map on your desktop, which is at the same time a local locative uh, experience, um, the, the, uh, letting you access co media contents by walking around in your environment. So um, these two aspects um, are, are crucial for how we work together with the collaborative elements. We keep an eye on the local, but we are uh, with the other feet, um, the other foot, we are in a global uh, context. Even more important to think on a global way uh, today to tackle and um, uh, give answers uh, for what is uh, 
uh, what are the crises of our the times of today? Um, so let's uh, answer yes. some questions. Or I, I will. Uh, I will switch to uh, the webinar and pres uh, and uh, uh, conversation mode. So you will see we will do this uh, during the course. So now we are in the webinar mode and we will shift and we will be more in a Zoom like conversation and you will be able to activate your camera and your microphone. So I'm proceeding. I am also stopping the recording.